Malware are programs or parts of programs that have a malicious or unpleasant effect on your computer security. This covers many different terms that you may have heard before, such as virus, worm and trojan and possibly a few that you haven't like rootkit, logic bomb and spyware. This video will introduce, define and explain each of these subdivisions of malware, and will explain some of the countermeasures that can be put into place to restrict the problems caused by malware. The first is Viruses Viruses are self-replicating pieces of software that, similar to a biological virus, attach themselves to another program, or, in the case of macro viruses, to another file. The virus is only run when the program or the file is run or opened. It is this which differentiates viruses from worms. If the program or file is not accessed in any way, then the virus will not run and will not copy itself further. There are a number of types of viruses, although, significantly, the most common form today is the macro virus, and others, such as the boot sector virus are now only found in captivity. The second is worms. Worms are older than viruses. The first worm was created many years before the first virus. This worm made use of a flaw in the Unix finger command to quickly bring down most of the internet. This following section deals with worms. A worm is a program that, after it has been started, replicates without any need for human intervention. It will propagate from host to host, taking advantage of an unprotected service or services. It will traverse a network without the need for a user to send an infected file or email. Most of the large incidents in the press recently have been worms rather than viruses. The third is Trojans and spyware. The first Trojan horse was created by the Greeks several thousand years ago. Think about the film Troy if you have seen it. The basic concept is that you sneak something nasty into an otherwise secure computer in the guise of something nicer. This can range from a downloaded game trailer to an email promising naked pictures of your favorite celebrity. This section covers Trojans and spyware. Trojans are pieces of malware which masquerade as something either useful or desirable in order to get you to run them. At this point they may well do something unpleasant to your computer such as install a backdoor or rootkit, or, even worse, dial a premium rate phone number that will cost you money. Spyware is software that installs itself surreptitiously, often from websites that you might visit. Once it is installed it will look for information that it considers valuable. This may be usage statistics regarding your web surfing, or it might be your credit card number. Some pieces of spyware blow their cover by rather irritatingly popping up advertisements all over your desktop. The fourth is Rootkits and Backdoors Rootkits and backdoors are pieces of malware that create methods to retain access to a machine. They could range from the simple, a program listening on a port to the very complex programs which will hide processes in memory, modify log files, and listen to a port. Often a backdoor will be as simple as creating an additional user in a password file which has super user privileges, in the hope that it will be overlooked. This is because a backdoor is designed to bypass the system's normal authentication. Both the so big and my doom viruses install backdoors as part of their payload. Often when a computer has been compromised by a hacker, they will attempt to install a method to retain easy access to the machine. There are many variations on this, some of which have become quite famous, have a look on the internet for back orifice. The last is Logic Bombs and Time Bombs. Logic Bombs and Time Bombs are programs which have no replication ability and no ability to create an access method, but are applications or parts of applications that will cause damage to data should they become active. They can be standalone or part of worms or viruses. Time bombs are programmed to release their payload at a certain time. Logic bombs are programmed to release their payload when a certain event occurs. The idea behind time bombs, however, is also a useful one. Time bomb programming is used to allow you to download and try a program for a period of time usually 30 days. At the end of the trial period, the program ceases to function unless a registration code is provided. This is an example of non-malicious time bomb programming. There are a number of simple things that you can do in order to minimize your risk to malware. Use sandboxes. Only download from reputable sources. Use VPN. Don't open email attachments from people you don't know. Don't leave macros enabled by default in your applications. 
keep your OS and applications up to date with patches. If downloading and installing software with a checksum, check the checksum. Thanks for spending some time with us today. We're so glad to you did. If you found value in today's video, please give us a like, hit that bell icon to never miss an upload. And don't forget to subscribe. We see you tomorrow.